So additional inflow into Keystone Lake is requiring us to make adjustments to the releases from the dam. And as Joe mentioned, we are going to increase to 250,000 cubic feet per second at noon today. Currently, 300,000 cubic feet per second is flowing into Keystone Lake. We expect that to peak at around 320,000 cubic feet per second later today and then slowly begin to recede. So our plan is at this time, at 10 o'clock this morning, um, we are increasing to 235,000 cubic feet per second, and then we'll increase to 250,000 cubic feet per second at noon. We will continue a release of 250,000 cubic feet per second through Sunday, and then begin to decrease those releases until we get to a, a channel capacity flow next week. Travel times you can expect are two to four hours uh, in the Sand Springs area, uh, six hours through uh, uh, Midtown Tulsa into the, uh, the 71st Street corridor, and then eight to 12 hours in South Tulsa, Bixby area, and to the uh, Tulsa Wagner County line. We are at capacity at Skytook, so we began a release of 3,000 cubic feet per second this morning and um, that will affect areas along Bird Creek and uh, we continue to make large releases from Fort Gibson Dam so we have impacts downstream Muskogee and downstream from Muskogee where we have the ongoing flood and uh, we forecast uh, peak flow in the Muskogee area and downstream from there of around 530,000 cubic feet per second. I would also say that as the water sits on the levees, uh, the longer that duration, the more risk we have for failures. But um, we are amping up all eyes on the levee to, to make sure as we have any issues that we are on it immediately. Um, uh, as you just heard, some of the neighborhoods along the river, um, now many of them have water in those homes and with the anticipated 250,000 cubic feet per second, heading their way, we know that they're gonna take on a whole lot more water and more of the homes will be inundated. Uh, power is about to be cut to Meadow Valley and town and country. Um, we are also checking, I thought the Tulsa Boys home was fine, it's up on a hill, but they're right, uh, Meadow Valley is right below them. So PSO is trying to check uh, on their power situation. They're already having to bring in Porta Johns. So we may, it might be possible that we have to move some of the boys. Some of them have been sent home, but uh, Greg and the staff as well on that. Um, the aquarium, uh, we've been hauling in some 500 pound uh, sandbags. Uh, so grateful to the Allen Edwards group for pulling those uh, together for us and some of the volunteers that have been loading them on trucks and getting them there. So um, just staging, just things are high and dry there right now. So. Uh, we just want to be prepared if it gets any worse. So all hands on deck. Everybody's working really well together. In, when it comes to providing people with information that can help them protect themselves and their families and their neighbors, we want to err on the side of radical transparency. So we put out the, the map last night that shows the impact of the 1986 flood. Uh, all night long, our, hydrolo our hydrologists were working on uh, updating uh, our current maps showing because Tulsa's obviously changed a lot since 1986. Uh, new developments, changes in topography, uh, even the river itself, the corridor has changed in the last 33 years. And so they have updated all of that and, and we have now created a website at cityoftulsa.org slash river maps and folks can go to that and see all of the mapping that we're utilizing to manage this response and also be able to utilize that mapping to make their own decisions about what types of steps they need to take to protect themselves, uh, their families, and their neighbors.